up, everybody? It's Justin. Welcome to Live Ask Me Anything, number 95. Ask Me Anything, number 95, slash post-Thanksgiving AMA. Whoa. How are the holidays, everybody? Did any of my information last week help you in any way, shape, or form in dealing with the holidays? And by that, I mean soaking up embracing the holidays, enjoying time with loved ones. I hope you guys had an amazing time. Um, real quick, can you guys hear me okay? Everybody just say yes, give me a thumbs up, give me a happy face emoji, whatever you need to do. Let me know if you can hear me correctly because I've been having some trouble with this and I can't figure out exactly what's going on. I can't figure out if it's Facebook or if it's my laptop or if it's my fancy microphone. Can you guys hear me? Somebody let me know. Catherine, what's up? Judy, what's up? Jody, what's up? What's up? What's up? Sorry, Joe, what's up? Give me a shout. Okay, I got thumbs ups. Thumbs ups are cool. Somebody give me content. Yes, awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. I appreciate it. Need to know you guys can hear me so I can rant to you for the next hour about whatever I decide to rant about. Just kidding. It's whatever you guys decide to rant about. So keep going. Hit the thumbs up button. You guys know I like that. Thumbs up, smiley face, happy face, love button, heart, all the things. Share this on your wall. You can share this because we are in the public group, facebook.com slash the Clovis culture. So share, share, share. You can just click the share button, share it right to your timeline. I really appreciate it. You can tag your friends in it, like Kayla always does. Um, when you have people that you want to see this content, you can just tag them, hit the app button, type in their name, put it in the comments, and they will be able to see this video because it is public. So I went live in the Facebook groups this morning. If you're not in the Facebook groups, you should be. The Clovis Academy is completely free. That is facebook.com slash groups slash Clovis Academy. And it's amazing. We're just shy of 2,000 members right now, always asking fantastic questions in there, sharing testimonies, sharing recipes, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, but I go live in the Facebook groups and ask for questions, which you can submit at ama.iamclovis.com. Sorry if this is repetitive. I know a lot of you have already heard this because this is AMA number 95, which is a whole lot of AMAs. So you understand what this is. You know the spiel. You know the drill. You guys have submitted questions. And today, was no exception. You were excellent with the questions. I got some great questions that I'm excited to dive into. What's up, Kayla? Aloha. I love that. What's up, Catherine? What's up, Emily? Tammy, what's up? Krista, hey, hey. Who else we got here? I can't scroll up anymore. All right. Anyway, lots of cool people. Kayla's tagging people. Awesome. If you want to tag your friends, tag your friends. Now, remember, you guys can ask me questions here as well. If you did not submit at ama.iamclovis.com, we're going to dig into some topics tonight, and I want you guys to give me your thoughts on them, your opinions on them. Ask me for a clarification or to go further on answers. Real quick, I do want to touch on the fact that the Dr. Wes Hendricks podcast is live, the Clovis Culture podcast, and that's with Dr. Wes Hendricks, and it's amazing. Love the dude. He's fantastic. He's an incredible athlete. Blows my mind with the things he does with gymnastics and calisthenics training. You guys may have seen me on my Instagram today doing my weak-ass handstands compared to Wes's handstands, which are absolutely ridiculous. But hey, trying my best. There's progress. Getting better with split handstands. Um, looking pretty good. Getting there. Okay, After just a few weeks of training, it's pretty, pretty unbelievable. Uh, this guy's programming is just fantastic. Dr. Wes Hendricks teamed up with The Movement Fix to do these amazing bodyweight programs that I'm participating in right now and absolutely loving them. But go listen to that Dr. Wes Hendricks podcast. We talk a lot about fitness. We talk a lot about long-term goals, long-term thinking. Um, I did a whole AMA about this once, finite versus infinite gains. I was trying to get you guys to understand that the journey is the destination. There is no end goal. The end goal never happens, right? There's always an end. Even if you grow up and win the Super Bowl, there's the day after the Super Bowl and the day after the day after the Super Bowl, right? It doesn't matter what end goal you achieve. It's never the end goal because life continues as long as you still have breath in your lungs, right? So that's the thing that you have to remember is the journey is the destination. We talk a lot about this in that episode of Wes Hendricks where we talk about our own personal mindset shifts from 21-day goals to three-year goals. Where do I want to be three years from now, right? It took me four years to be a blue belt in jujitsu. Um, that's a long time to sign up for something. But for some reason, we all think of exercise in this really broken way. And um, that was sold to us by marketers. And it's been continually sold to us by marketers. And it's the same thing with mainstream medical. The doctors don't know that they're doing us harm. They're just doing what they were taught in school. The personal trainers don't know that they're doing you harm. They're just doing what they were taught in school. It's only when you understand that the entire system is fundamentally broken that you 
will start to look elsewhere for information that you realize that you must start to look elsewhere for information. So I want to touch on exercise real quick because I've been getting a lot of questions about this because it's December and we know that New Year's resolutions are around the corner and everyone's going to start getting back to their planet fitness and anytime fitness gyms again, right? The Globo gyms. So I want you to understand that I'm going to do a Just Justin episode about this and maybe write an article about it. But um, while well, I've been working on an article about it, there's it's like 5,000 words already. So I got to figure out how to whittle that down. Um, but anyway, it's this entire concept of exercise that we have really, really wrong. So exercise is only beneficial when the physical demand placed on the body is appropriate for beneficial adaptation, meaning the physical demand is appropriate for an appropriate response. That's the entire goal with physical training. We want to put enough of a stress on the body that the body is forced to adapt in a beneficial way. But you have to understand that any more than that, not only is it unnecessary, but it's actually detrimental. I am firmly convinced from all of my research, from my 17 years of being a meathead, I am convinced that virtually all exercise and fitness as prescribed to people in America is harmful not just not beneficial, I believe it is harmful. Truly. I truly believe this. We have 85% of the population is overweight and obese. Clearly, whatever we've been trying to do isn't working in nutrition and in fitness. So let me just give you a quick little rundown of this, and then we'll jump into the AMA questions. Let's take the example of push-ups. If you can do 10 push-ups, then if you were to do 10 push-ups, rest 20 seconds, and then do as many push-ups as you can again, you might only get two or three push-ups. That can be the end of the workout for you. You have sufficiently placed a stress on the body that will force beneficial adaptation, okay? That is great. That's beneficial. Now, if you can do 10 push-ups well, and you do that 10 push-ups and stop, and then the next day do 10 push-ups and stop, and the next day do 10 push-ups and stop, and you do this every day for 30 years, you will not get any stronger and you will not build any additional muscle. You did not put a significant enough stress on the body to force physical adaptation. But like I said, if you do 10 push ups, rest 20 seconds, and then do two or three push ups, you're going to put a physical demand in the body that forces beneficial adaptation. This is the way that we need to be thinking about fitness. What is the maximum that we need to do to force that beneficial adaptation? So it's basically an idea. It's what is the maximum thing that we need to do, right? But it's still minimum effective dose. So if somebody can do five push-ups on their knees and they do five push-ups on their knees and take a rest and do one more push-up on their knees, that's all that they need to do. But instead, and this is the new litmus test that I have for people, people come to me and they ask me about fitness. So I've started asking them, if you lay down on the floor or sit down on the floor, can you get up off of the floor without using your hands? This doesn't sound astronomically difficult. Try it. Just give it a shot. Sit down on your butt and then try to get up off the floor without using your hands. So I need you guys to understand this is not putting anybody down. This should be actually quite motivational, letting you know why you might hate fitness, why it's been so miserable for you to do fitness in the past, why you can't bring yourself to do it consistently because you're just miserable doing it. It's because of this reason right here. If you can't get up off the ground without using your hands, there is exactly zero reason why you should ever participate in intense exercise, ever, until we get you to a healthier place, okay? So I don't care how many fitness influencers, Ben Greenfield, Mark Sissons, I don't care who told you that all-out sprints are fantastic for you. If you can't get up off the ground without your hands, you got no business doing sprints, Okay, you got no business doing CrossFit. You got no business doing Barry's boot camp. You got no business going and doing a bodybuilding workout. You just don't. I can't tell you how many guys come to me that were ex Division I college athletes. They're football players. Now they're 30 and they're 400 pounds. And they're like, you don't understand, bro. I'm all muscle under this fat. I'm all muscle. I was an athlete. I was a Division I athlete. And I go, sit down, get up off the floor without using your hands. All right, bro, you don't get to do intense workouts. You just don't. You're not 20. You're not 20 anymore. You're not a Division I college athlete anymore. This isn't meant to put people down. It's meant to help them understand why they are failing in the realm of fitness. If you can't do a body weight squat with perfect form, why would you put a barbell on your back? Why would you do that, right? 
So this is what I'm trying to help. I'm trying to help people experience freedom in the realm of fitness and exercise training. This is crazy. I don't care what Tony Horton says. You shouldn't do a 90 minute P90X workout if you can't get up off the ground without using your hands, right? It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It doesn't. You can do very simple body weight movements for five to 10 minutes a day and get in shape. You absolutely can do this. There's videos of this that I put out for you guys, time under tension body weight workouts on the I am Clovis membership section or this idea of demand training that I've been doing a lot of lately, which is body weight works to triple failure, then an isometric hold, then a negative. Yes, that's a lot more than you need to do. Uh, for most of you, that's a lot more than you need to do. But I'm trying to help you understand, don't feel bad because you don't want to do a CrossFit workout. If you're a female and you're five foot three and 200 pounds, and you decide you're going to go into the CrossFit gym, you're going to do the same wad as the 20 year old next to you with the shredded six, six pack who's been doing CrossFit for five years. Yes, he's going to do more weight than you. He's going to do it a little faster than you. He's going to have better times, but you're doing the same fucking workout. That's insane. Why? Why, 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 why? Would you ever do that? That is fucking dumb. Okay. I can't wrap my head around what we're doing with fitness here. Like I had a, a call with a client today. It was like, yeah, I went into my gym and talked to a personal trainer about the things that you say to do. And he was like, no, that guy's wrong. We're not doing any of that. And then proceeds to give her this bodybuilding workout that he would give a 19 year old, like trying to compete in a bodybuilding competition. This is ridiculous. We got really dumb people giving advice in this world. I, I hate to say it that way. But I mean, really dumb people. If they can't see like the forest for the trees in this, if they can't understand that what they're doing is fundamentally broken, I don't know. But what we have is these personal trainers that are shredded with six packs, good genetics or whatever, and they give people the same workout plan and then they go home and watch Netflix. They're not like crazy intellectual people for the most part that I've seen. I know there are outliers. I know there are great personal trainers out there. I just haven't met a whole lot of them. I gotta be honest with you. I really, really haven't. I've been very, very disappointed in that realm for a very long time. Um, so that's my rant about exercise. You just need to understand what is good for you, okay? What you need to cause beneficial adaptation. That's all you need to be doing. I have one client that's starting GMB and is probably gonna do nothing but the preparation warm-ups, the warm-up portion of the, the exercise, of the, of the workout. She's probably just going to do warm-ups maybe for a month, maybe for two months, as long as it takes to get the mobility back, the prerequisite mobility to even begin the program, right? Now, if we look at finite versus infinite games, this becomes easier to do. Don't worry about where your fitness is gonna be 21 days from now, because guess what? You can't really make meaningful change in 21 days when it comes to fitness. Athletes can't. If you try to train judo for, 20, for 21 days and then go fight PETA, my MMA fighter who's been training for 20 years, you're gonna get thrown on your head. That's all there is to it. But for some reason, we understand that with martial arts. Oh, I can't go up against a boxer who's been boxing 10 years if I've only boxed for 21 days, right? I can't do that. But for some reason, I think I can go into the same CrossFit gym as Rich Froning and do the same CrossFit wad that he does. It's fucking stupid. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how else to say this. It's really dumb. It's really, really dumb the way that we approach fitness with average everyday people. It's insane. Get out of your heads with this ego thing. Most of you are not athletes. Most of us are not athletes, right? We're not professional athletes. It's, it's crazy. We have to meet ourselves where we are and stop setting ourselves up for failure. It's just crazy, right? Stop setting yourself up for failure. Don't do that. So that's my exercise spiel. What are some comments? What's up, Tammy? Krista, is this Nashville sign in your home? No, so this is, the, uh, this is one of the Airbnbs that my family owns downtown. So we own two Airbnbs uh, right next to each other. They are two townhomes. This one that I'm in right now is five bedrooms and the one next door is five bedrooms as well. It's like five bedrooms, four bathrooms or something. They're really, really big. Um, my Airbnb that I own exclusively myself is in Hermitage and that is rented out. Um, so when that's rented out and this one is open, I get to come stay down here and I love this. It's amazing. I'm right downtown in the heart of Nashville. It's beautiful. I love this place. Fantastic. Mike, you're a beast. Great stuff. Thank you, brother. It's just really, really smart, intelligent. This is an intelligent way to look at it. How do you know when you're overtraining? Well, I'll tell you, sit down on the ground and then get up off the ground without using your hands. <laughs> you know, uh, so see where you're at. We need to figure out your starting point first. So here's the thing. Most people, it's a great question because most people actually don't know where their starting point is. Why? Because they will go to the gym and do what a trainer tells them or do what they saw their friends doing or whatever. It, like if you go do a workout and you're just in tremendous pain the next day, you're overtraining 100%. This whole idea of like you're supposed to be sore, no pain, no gain, it's all bullshit. It's all nonsense, okay? 
it's just ridiculous. So you should not be killing yourself. You just absolutely shouldn't be doing that. So in general, you're going to have to find your own, what you could do is basic, basic movements, like get in the ground, see how many pushups you can do, see how many body weight squats you can do, go to a pull-up bar and see if you can do a single pull-up. Um, do push-ups on your knees, try these things, try to get in a bridge position and do and and, or in a downward dog and do some shoulder presses and see what that feels like. You need to just start moving your body. And the tricky thing is when you go do machines and barbells and all these different things is you can really hide a lot of things. Dr. Wes Hendricks and I talk about this in our podcast that it's very easy to do weightlifting moves with really bad form. Now over the long term, you're going to hurt yourself, right? But in the short term, it's very easy to throw 200 pounds on a barbell and squat and be like, yup, did it, nailed it, and you don't worry about your mechanics at all. So the important thing is that's a very difficult question for me to answer via Facebook Live. How do you know when you're overtraining? I have no idea. I've never worked with you. I've never trained with you, right? I've never seen you work out in person. Um, But I'm telling you, this is the thing that I've found is you sit down on the ground and can't get up without using your hands. Virtually any intense exercise that you're doing is probably going to be overtraining for you, honestly. And I think you should just stick to body weight stuff in your own home. Push-ups, body weight squats. Um, if you can get bands to do like assisted pull-ups or something like that is a great idea. A really light kettlebell, maybe some kettlebell work might be good. I think that people starting with, with programs that are calisthenics like GMB elements, I talk about GMB all the time. Their element program is fantastic. If you are overweight, kind of out of shape, not really sure where to start, get the elements program. And day one, they're going to have you crawling around like a bear. If you've been crawling around like a bear for 60 seconds and you're covered in sweat, then basically everything you were doing before that, your ellipticals, your bodybuilding, everything else, you were overtraining 100% because your body wasn't ready for it. So you need to find your starting place to determine what overtraining is, if that makes sense. Okay. What else we got? I think everyone in this call should take two minutes to do this, then come back in to say yes or no. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Go try it. If you can't jump off the floor like my three-year-old when she hears hot chocolate, quit that CrossFit. <laughs> yeah, that's great advice. What else we got? Nothing will make people quit faster than being so sore I can't move for several days after workout. Yes, exactly. This is the, the, the New Year's resolution things. Everybody, the gym is full on January 1st, and February 1st, it's empty again, right? It, it's ridiculous. Crazy. Okay, I can get it from floor, boom, with hands up in the air. Fantastic, dude. That's great. Congrats. Ah, I got it. Like it. I'm at the age I can hurt myself sleeping. <laughs> that has nothing to do with age. Remember, Papa Nall, my old man is 60 years old, deadlifts 350 pounds, and has a shredded six-pack. That's because he lives Clovis. Age means nothing. It's literally, literally just a number. Uh, what else we got? How many of us sat on the ground and tried this? I hope a lot of you did. I found a fabulous new coach who does group exercises and pushes us to challenge ourselves. Lots of kettlebell swings and body weights starting out. Good. Okay, that's good. But again, remember, I get really, really concerned with group fitness classes. I call this the jump up and down and sweat for no reason classes. I'm not saying that's what yours is, um, but most personal trainers know if you make people very sweaty, you make them huff and puff, and you make them sore, you will make more money. That is all you have to do as a personal trainer because the people believe in their heads that they're doing something beneficial. I have noticed an epidemic lately of overweight group fitness instructors. This drives me crazy, okay? There are actual art. This is how crazy we've gotten in America, ladies and gentlemen. You can literally Google right now overweight registered dietitians, and you will see these websites from people who are claiming that there's no such thing as one healthy body shape and they are obese registered dietitians and obese nutritionists and obese personal trainers and obese group fitness instructors that are like, my body's beautiful and I don't fall into the category of standard healthy body. I am my own person and I have a healthy body. Look, I am all for loving your body, I get it, but this is fucking crazy. Okay, you you just know you need to rethink everything you learned in school. If you're a registered dietitian and you're obese, you don't give you don't get to give nutrition information anymore. You just don't. There's a question about this tonight that I'm going to actually I'll dive into that right from here because it's a perfect segue. But you have to understand it's the same thing with a division one college athlete being 30 years old and 400 pounds and like I'm an athlete. Wait a second. Wait a second. Richard, you're an athlete. You're 400 pounds. You haven't worked out since you were 20 years old when you quit the division one college football team that was your last workout and you call yourself an athlete 
This is the same thing as a registered dietitian. This is craziness. We have gotten so far, this is totally politically incorrect for me to say, we have gotten so far into this love the skin you're in, accept your body, all this thing. If you're a type two diabetic, you gotta fix things. You have to fix things, period. If you're an overweight registered dietitian, quit your job, get a new job or get better at it. Because this is crazy. Well, what we're doing is we're accepting one out of four adolescents right now is diabetic. This is just mental. Everything that we are doing in the mainstream is not working at all. I had no intention of getting on here and ranting tonight, by the way, everybody. This was not in my plan. I felt like being loving and empathetic today, but this is absolutely nuts. It's just nuts. Now I'm ranting and it happened because group fitness came up, but I have been pulling my hair out with group fitness lately. Literally, anytime I travel or anything, if I pop in at a gym, I'm just watching a woman who's bigger than all the women that she's teaching doing this group fitness stuff. We're gonna stay in the fat burning zone today, ladies, blah, 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 blah. How's that fat zone, how that fat burning zone working out for you, right? It's delusion. I tell you guys this all the time in Clovis, don't be delusional. There are clips of me all over the internet saying, don't be delusional, don't be delusional. Self-awareness, self-actualization. Who are you? Be honest with yourself. You cannot be an obese registered dietitian. Get out of bed, give nutrition advice, and fucking feel good about yourself. You can't. There's no way, which means you are living in conflict with yourself, and then you create a blog, The Overweight Dietitian. Let me tell you about my journey as an overweight dietitian, right? And it's just nonsense. It's, you're, you you got to fix these things. We can't just keep accepting these things as status quo. It's insane. I don't know what to do about this stuff anymore. I really don't. It's crazy. Anyway, all right. What else we got here? <laughs> Love your answers. They're the best and very true of anyone would just get out of their own heads. Yes, exactly. 100%. So uh, just be very careful with this stuff. And Kayla, I'm also just, no, I'm not, I don't know your coach. So I'm not saying your coach is this or whatever. It's just anytime I hear group fitness, fitness, my red flags start to go off. Um, but yeah, yours might be great. She might be awesome. You know, I know kettlebells instructors here in Nashville that do group fitness kettlebells and they are world-class. They're also $250 an hour for one-on-one -on -one coaching. And I've worked with them personally, which is where I get all of my kettlebell information from. There are people who do group fitness that are fantastic at it. Yes. I, I can't apply this blanket statement to everybody. Of course not. There are always going to be outliers, but if the problem with obesity and overweight in America was, you know, if there was just a surplus of fantastic personal trainers with amazing information and registered dietitians with amazing information and all the doctors just gave accurate nutrition advice, do you really think there'd be an overweight and obese epidemic? Do you really think that people just have so much little willpower that 85% of the population would still be overweight and obese if all the information they were getting is correct? No, there's no way that would happen. No way. It's not the people's fault. It's the information fault. It's not your fault. It's the information's fault. The information, the information. I'm not saying I hate doctors. I'm not saying I hate personal trainers. I'm not saying I hate registered dietitians. I just wish they would pay attention. This shit is not secret, everybody. When you have anecdotal stories of millions of people all around the world restricting carbohydrates and magically losing body fat, holy crap. And the doctors are like, we don't know how to explain this. Just ignore that. Don't look behind the curtain. Keep listening to us. Calories in, calories out. Man. Ridiculous. It's just, I don't know what to do anymore. Crystal, I finally found a good trainer that had a gym. When I walked, he said, don't even look at the workout of day. For a long time, you were going to learn how to squat wall push-ups. Then he snapped by a hospital and no longer took private clients. Yeah, that's a bummer. There are really good. And that's the thing is, is a lot of times the best trainers in the world are very difficult to access. Really very, very difficult to access. That's the tricky part, you know? And you get guys like me that are doing nutrition and have well over a thousand um, testimonies of just fantastic results. And they're like, oh, your, your, your membership is $27 and your custom plan's $47? Wait a minute, what? Where uh, people would rather somehow go get bariatric surgery than pay that. It, it's, I don't know, I can't wrap my head around people's brains. I really can't. So should I not take advice from an overweight inflamed functional medicine doctor? Hell no. Do you have an overweight inflamed functional medicine doctor? Get a new doctor. 100% get a new doctor. You can show them this clip. I don't care. Give them my email address. Tell them to email Justin and I am Clovis.com and I'll help them get their shit together before they start giving bad information to people. That literally irritates me to no end, if you guys can't tell. So, should we dive into some AMAs? 
I think we should dive into some questions that were submitted before I get myself in too much trouble here with the social justice warriors. He said something about fat people. He's he's a mean man. He should he should resign from Twitter. <laughs> he should no longer be the CEO of Clovis. He made fun of overweight group fitness instructors. Let's force him to resign. Good luck. I'll choke you to death. <laughs> I'm really not worried about you. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> here we go. Let's dive into AMAs, all right? Uh, but yeah, Laura, no, for real. Yeah, you need a new doctor, 100%. 100%. I, I just, I will never find that acceptable. It will never be acceptable. Dr. Ken Berry and I, listen to my podcast with Dr. Ken Berry. He was an obese doctor. And he talks about how absurd that was that anybody took information from him. It's just crazy. The fact that he gave anyone nutrition advice. You are not allowed to be overweight and inflamed and give dietary advice. So with that in mind, I'm going to dig into this question um, because I think this is really important. I also want you guys to understand, it is not your job to give nutrition advice. It is not your job to preach Clovis. It is not your job to debate with people. You didn't join Clovis to become a soldier. You joined Clovis because you just wanted to get healthy. You didn't want to become a nutrition expert. You didn't want to become a public debater. You didn't want to become a social influencer. You joined Clovis just so you could get healthy and get on with your life, living your best life, your happiest life. You wanted to get rid of the obstacle of nutrition, health, and wellness so that you could live your best life. That's what you wanted to do. That's why you came to Clovis. It is not your job to debate and fight with people. So let me read this question that was submitted. Here's the question. My life lately, feeling totally confident in my personal decisions with Clovis, loaded with facts, science, and your research. But here is the kicker. People ask me about Clovis. That's easy enough to answer. But on more specific issues, will there come a time where it becomes easier to, quote, regurgitate, end quote, the same facts and science that ultimately swayed my entire outlook on the matter? I feel like I know the answers to their questions when they try to rebuttal, but my, re, when they try to rebut my standpoint, is what this person's saying, but have a hard time accessing those answers on the spot. I feel like I fail at living by example when I look like I can't throw quick facts and bits of knowledge their way. Sorry for the rant. Okay, so this person is talking a little bit differently. Now we're not talking about being overweight and giving advice. You're talking about intellectually. You didn't sign up to be a debater. This is not why you got into Clovis. It is not your job to fight with people. This is where I talk about the concept of working in the dark. Your only job is to live by example. Just just in episode number one, is called working in the dark. Working in the dark is the concept of finding things that you would work at, even if nobody ever knew you worked at them, if you never got any validation for it. You never got any acclaim for it. Nobody ever knew you did these things. You never got any praise whatsoever. It's the other concept is like, you know, what would you, what would you work at? Even if you knew you would fail, what would you work at? If money were no object, you didn't need the money. If you had all the money in the world, what would you work towards working in the dark? What do you not care that people know? I don't care if people know that I do handstands, right? Like I share them on, on Facebook and Instagram because I have chosen to be a health and wellness influencer is the role that I'm in now. I've said this to you in other AMAs. If I said this on Thanksgiving, if I wasn't a health and wellness influencer, the handstands would still be happening. They just wouldn't be on Instagram. The gigs as a musician would still be happening. They just wouldn't be on Instagram, right? You see what I'm saying? What would you work in the dark for? You have to ask that question. Now, Clovis, in my opinion, you should be working in the dark most of the time because here is what happens with everybody. It's the same thing that happens. You can literally equate it to born again Christians, right? They get hit with this thing that just really hits them in their soul, hits them in their heart, changes their life for the better. And they're just convinced that this is the answer for everybody. And they want to scream it from the rooftops. The problem is, and you'll see this in religions as well, is these Christians go out and start being evangelical. Now, again, uh, when I say these Christians, I was a born again Christian for like 15 years or whatever, right? So um, I can talk to you guys about this, but they go out well before they are ready to enter into any kind of debate or change any minds. They don't have all the facts. They don't know things as well as they should to get in these kinds of conversations that they're attempting to enter into. So Really, your only job with Clovis is to live your best life, is to live Clovis and live by example. Here's the thing. All of the people that are challenging you or asking you to come up with these quick things off the top of your head for their rebuttals, the people that are rebutting you do not know what they're talking about. I promise you. I promise you. Guys, I have been doing this podcast for over two years. 
I have gotten comments on Facebook and private messages and met with people in person and talked to some of the top experts in the world on my podcast. I am yet to find somebody who just wonderfully challenges me in a super articulate manner and has all the facts. The ones that are rebutting you are the people that don't want to hear your information. That's it. They don't know what they're talking about. They're banking on the fact that you don't know what you're talking about so they can make themselves feel better. You are in an ego pissing contest. This is what's happening. Nobody wins here. So could you go study all the AMAs? You could. I mean, you could go watch all my AMAs. You could watch lectins and leaky gut. You could watch back to basics fat loss. You could watch fitness for fat loss. You could listen to all these episodes. You could take notes as you're listening to them. You could go to any studies that I cite or any books that I read. You could go read all of those books. You could do what I do, which is read a book on Kindle and take digital highlights. Then I open the Kindle app on my Mac when I'm done with that book and I go through all of the highlights that I've taken and I transcribe them by hand via typing into Evernote. So it's like I read the book twice, all the main books, points of the books twice. This is how I'm able to pull information off the top of my head because I do this with every book that I read. I am meticulous about how I study these things and I have been studying biochemistry for seven plus years now, right? So so the question becomes, do you want to do that? Would you work in the dark for that? Are you willing to work in the dark to know the amount of information that I know about nutrition, health, and wellness? Or is your motivation for learning to have pissing contests with other people and quote unquote, win the debate? If your goal is to know enough to win debates, give up now. Don't. Don't do it. Don't go down that road. You're, you are going down a miserable path. It is a path of ego and it will not lead to any fulfillment just because you destroy your cousin Brian in a debate at Thanksgiving dinner. This is not the way to fulfillment everybody. So if you truly want to learn the ins and outs of health and wellness and you want to do all the things that I just talked about, if you want to contact me and learn what textbooks you should read to learn biochemistry, because if you want to learn biochemistry, you got to learn textbooks. You're not going to learn biochemistry from novels from just, you know, nonfiction books that are written by people, you need to go into the textbooks. You need to dig into the textbooks or I can point you in the direction of Khan Academy or Coursera or all these things where you can learn the basics of biochemistry. If you want to go down that road, that is what it takes. So when you ask me the question of will there ever come a time where you'll be able to access this information off the top of your head in some kind of debate, like I would be able to, sure, there could come a time if you are willing to put in that work. So that's a question for you. I can't answer that question. If you really want to go down that road, sure, go for it. Absolutely. I would love, 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 love it if the vast majority of people that ever came into Clovis dedicated years of their lives to understanding nutrition, fitness, health, wellness, in and out. If people would do that, great. I would love it. I want to build an army of Clovis coaches. I actually want to do a Clovis coaching program in the future that I will build for you guys at some point. I promise you there will be a Clovis coaching program eventually, okay? One step at a time. I think very long-term, everybody. I am playing the long game. I have always been playing the long game. That's all that Clovis is, is long game. So it's got to be that for you as well. So before you, you're asking the wrong question. The question should be, do you want to have all of that information in your brain? Do you want all that information in your brain for you? Would that make your life better? Would that make your life more fulfilling? Would you feel better about yourself? Would your life be happier? Would you have more enjoyment, more fulfillment? If you actually knew the ins and outs of biochemistry of how your body worked and how to answer questions when people genuinely have questions. Because when people are arguing with you, they don't have questions. They just want to fight with you. That's a totally different thing. That's not a conversation. That's a debate. You don't want to get in debates. I don't debate just conversations, right? So if you want that information, go for it, go all in, go all in. And I'll give you all the resources you could possibly handle. So reach out to me. Um, but I just want you to know it is not your job to, to go out and fight with people or to go out and convince people. And the people that are pushing back on you, I assure you, they don't really care what you have to say. They are just trying to win an argument. That's it. It's all ego, 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 self-awareness. I want to learn it all because I'm a nerd and I love learning. There you go then dig in, learn it all. That's what you want to do. But make sure that the motivation is correct. Make sure the motivation is in the right place, right? So yes, will there come a time when you can shoot these facts off the top of your head? If that's what you want out of this life, then yeah, of course there can come a time. The only person limiting you from how much you could possibly know about the human body is you. You know, the amount of time that you want to put in. How much time do you have to dedicate to this? Because remember guys, when I the, the bulk of my 
learning of health, wellness, nutrition, and everything was done when I was playing two nights a week at a piano bar and paying all my bills and then some. I was, I did great in the music industry, you know? So I was literally working just Friday and Saturday. So Sunday through Thursday, all day, every day was just me educating myself. Not a lot of people have that luxury. I totally understand that, right? So anyway, hope that answers your question somewhat. But yes, there will come a time uh, if you if you work at it. So the other question I have, I really like this one. So if we talk about this, the, the self-awareness and stuff, let's see. I got a question about journaling. I got a question about sleep. Yeah, we can dig into, I think we can dig into both of these. Let's see. All right, let's jump on this one. So here's the question. I would like you to go over a little more about your journaling. Obviously, not exactly what you write, but how do you set up your stream of consciousness journaling? Do you base it on your challenges you face, or do you try and clear your mind and start fresh? Okay, so this is one of my favorite topics of all time. And I can tell you guys right now that, that just about my favorite thing that I've ever adopted and have ever done that will be with me forever is journaling. I think that journaling is like the mothership for all things that I do. And I have a lot of things I do in my routine. My first 90 minutes of my day at least is taken up just with routine, just with things that I do each and every day on autopilot. Um, and I love all of those things, but if I could only pick just one, it would probably be journaling. It'd be between journaling and cold showers, uh, but I think I get more benefit out of journaling, honestly. Cold showers are great too, but um, all the things I do in the morning are great, but journaling is fantastic. Um, the other thing, the other way to think about this is, so this person's asking me specifically about stream of consciousness journaling, which means that they're asking me about my daily journaling routine in the morning, uh, which I do each and every morning. So I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about that. But first, I just wanna explain that journaling is basically the mothership of everything that I do in terms of personal development. So if we talk about psychedelic journeys that I do or traditional therapy, which I do, or meditation or foreign travel or whatever, you you don't have to set a time for journaling. So I've told you guys this before, I think psychedelic trips are nothing without integration. Integration is far more important than the blast off the outer space, right? The integration is everything. The integration for me comes in the form of journaling. There are a few powerful things I do. Sometimes I will actually do video journaling, which is speaking to myself in a video. Um, this is quite powerful, by the way, if anybody ever wants to try this. Um, just speak to yourself in a video when you're in a particularly vulnerable place share with yourself, talking to your future self, something that you're going through. I'm really upset because of XYZ. I just reacted this way. Such and such said this, and I don't like the way I reacted. I'm feeling really sad, blah, 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 blah. Three weeks from now, go watch, go back and watch that video. Really powerful stuff. Give that a shot sometime. Um, but yeah, journaling is at the heart of it all. So if I do a psychedelic experience, I will journal like mad for days after that just to make sure I get all those thoughts out, just to make sure I try to grasp and remember everything that I learned on that particular trip. If I'm in traditional therapy and I have some kind of breakthrough, I will go home and journal. I will journal about it the next day. Um, if it's before bed and something's in my mind that I'm just really thinking about like, oh crap, this is gonna keep me up or whatever, I'll pull out the journal and journal. You can journal anytime, day or night. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Um, but again, this person seems to be asking me about stream of consciousness journaling, which is what I do each and every morning. This is something called morning pages, and it's pulled from a book called The Artist's Way. The Artist's Way is a great book. Um, I enjoyed it, but the only thing that I ended up using from it long term is morning pages. Now, the concept of morning pages, this is literally my journal right here. This is my favorite journal, by the way. It's just this memo sign is the same journal that I buy every time on and Amazon, and I go through them like crazy. This is a brand new one that I've just written in for two days now. I have my other one sitting over there, which will be thrown away. Um, so anyway, yeah, so I journal every morning. It's three pages, stream of consciousness, just free flowing, free form, stream of consciousness. So you write for three pages, and then you're done. You can tear them out and throw them away, or you can do what I do, which is I will fill an entire notebook, and then when the notebook is full, I will throw the notebook away, or recycle the notebook, preferably. Um, but the reason for this, is journaling is very powerful. The human mind is also very powerful and you can play tricks on yourself very easily. If you are somebody who really cares what other people think, if you are a people pleaser um, or just, just genuinely care too much about what other people think, you need to know that these pages are going to be torn, ripped up, put in a shredder, thrown in the garbage or something like that. The reason for that is you will lie to yourself. I promise you. This is the biggest problem I find with people in stream of conscious conscious and journaling is they lie to themselves. They're overly optimistic, they're overly positive, or I did great today, I feel wonderful, I'm gonna own the day today, when really in reality you should be like, I fucking feel like shit today. I woke up, I have a headache, this day sucks. Like only if, you, if you're really feeling amazing, 
then journal about feeling amazing. But do not lie to yourself. People will lie to themselves. This happens all the time with journaling. So you have to be very careful with that. It's very important that you know no one is ever going to read this. What people do in the back of their mind is, oh my God, I might be on vacation someday and someone will be house sitting and stumble across my journal and they're going to open it and they're going to see that I secretly want to have sex with my secretary. Oh boy, that's going to cause some problems, right? So they won't write stuff like that in their journals. When these are the exact thoughts that you need to be dealing with, right? If you have thoughts that are, that are giving you trouble, that are on your mind all the time, these are the things you need to write about. So to answer this person's question, stream of consciousness, how do I set it up? I really don't. I, I just genuinely don't. And in the beginning, it's really tricky for people because they'll be like, dude, what do I write? Some people have done this artist pages, uh, uh, morning pages thing. And been like, Justin, sometimes I sit there for 45 minutes and I have one page down and I'm like, good, keep going, right? So some people don't know what to say. So the, the daily practice, the consistency of this, get the wheels spinning. I don't care if you literally write, I have nothing to write about. And you write that a hundred times until you have covered three pages and you do that every day for a month. I don't care if that's what you do. It is going to get you in the habit of writing and thinking pen to paper, no cell phone, in a quiet room, by yourself. This is a fantastic practice. So it doesn't matter what you write in the beginning. This is the whole concept of stream of consciousness. Eventually, the things will flow. People struggle with stream of consciousness because they think they're supposed to be having some giant amazing insights or whatever. Like you could be writing in the journal like, oh man, I really gotta pee. Can't wait to have my morning cup of coffee. Husband was a real dick yesterday. Oh boy, I gotta, I gotta put the dog out. This is tough, right? That you're just flexing that muscle, flexing that muscle. It's the same way people think they're not good at meditation. It's like I sit down to meditate and I have so many thoughts. Yeah, exactly. The bicep curl is having thought and then coming back to mindfulness. That's the whole thing. The bicep curl of journaling is simply the act of journaling. Sometimes it can take two weeks, sometimes it can take a month, it can take two months before you start having these big giant realizations. Now, what happens in the back end? When you practice this stream of consciousness is you end up having the opposite impact, which is what I have. So I had a call with a client today that was talking about this. Um, that was basically saying, what if you, what if your thoughts are just too quick? You can't even keep up with the pen, you know, like the pen can't keep up with your thoughts. That's fantastic. That's, that is my reality. I live that every day. Um, sometimes three pages turns into 16 pages. If I feel like I need it, it's just going to happen. And the thing about it is it doesn't matter. So this, again, this is not a journal like dear diary, a month from now, I'm going to read this. No, my journal is complete and other, utter chicken scratch. Like nobody can read this. I, I don't know anybody that could read this except for me. Maybe I can maybe read it. Right. But that's not the point. The point is to fly through this exercise and just get your brain spinning, just pumping out these thoughts. You're just dealing with the thoughts and getting them out on paper, getting them out. You're flushing this stuff out. We hold so much stuff in internally. It's just crazy. You know, there are practices out there that people do like ecstatic dance. Like what's the point of ecstatic dance? Just to get out, get stuff out, get it out of you, right? People have, are so pent up these days and we numb everything. We numb with alcohol. We numb with pills and potions. We numb with sex. We numb with whatever. Numb, 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 right? You're supposed to feel things. The act of journaling helps these emotions come out through you onto the pen. It's really, really important. I think it's really important. So if you absolutely need something from journaling, then what I would do, I mean, if you absolutely need some kind of structure for the journaling, then I would start with one sentence. Just put, I am feeling dot, 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 and then close your eyes and breathe. Close your eyes, take deep breaths until something pops in your head that you feel like you need to write down. Take your time with this. Do not rush morning pages, okay? So literally just write, I am feeling. Sit with that. What am I feeling? You can touch your chest. You can touch your stomach. You can tap. Some people do tapping. Tapping is a great thing that people do. So just think about this. Just sit and think. Really, really go inward. I've been trying for months and months and months and months to try to get you guys to go inward, okay? You really got to go inward. It's really important. Um, but yeah. So morning pages is just stream of consciousness. I do three pages. Three pages is the morning pages practice. Uh, stream of consciousness, rip it out, throw it in the trash. And then of course, you can have multiple journals as well. So like sometimes I have another journal that I keep uh, for jujitsu. I have a jujitsu journal. I have a Clovis journal of things that I just write down. I have my high performance planner. I can show you this because this is here with me all the time. It's always open with me at my desk. High performance planner. I write, 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 write all day long, as you can see. This is just one day of my high performance planner, right? I write everything down all the time. It is 
Clovis would be nothing without Justin writing all the time. So journaling, you can do the, um, the free form, the stream of consciousness journaling, of course. But then at night, you might have another journal that you keep by your bedpost. It's like, you know, uh, bedtime ideas. So you can just write stuff down and get it out of your head so you can sleep better. A lot of people will do that. They'll journal before bed so they can get thoughts out so they can go to sleep and not have things worry about them. Uh, and not have things worry them, sorry. Crystal, it is amazing. Sometimes I just cry when I journal. Exactly, and that's exactly what you need, right? Morning or night, I am only alone at night. Whenever you can do it, there is no right or wrong time. Morning pages, I think, is important if you can do it. If it doesn't work for your schedule, you gotta do something else, right? I tell you guys this all the time. Don't do just what I do just because I do it. Uh, my morning routine goes exactly like this. I wake up, I use my tongue scraper from Aura Wellness, rinse my mouth out, go to the restroom, I do five minutes of yoga, I get in an ice cold shower for three to five minutes, come out of the ice cold shower, I make my bed, and then after making my bed, I will go downstairs, I will do downstairs when I'm here, I'm in a one story room in my house, right? Um, and then I do my morning pages, journaling, uh, nope, I'm sorry, I meditate first. So I do my Z technique, just my mantra meditation, that's 15 minutes, then I do my journaling, then I do my day planning, which is the day planner you just, you just saw, then I brew my coffee, which is a very extravagant thing. If you're an I'm Clovis member, you know that I'm a nerd about how I create my coffee and weigh it all and use a scale and grams and all these things. And then I make my coffee and then I read my Kindle with my coffee. All of this is going to be done before I ever take my phone out of airplane mode, before I answer an email, before any of that begins to happen. All of those things have to happen for me to have my ideal morning. And I do this nine times out of 10. Uh, it's amazing. I think it's absolutely life-changing. I think your morning routine is everything. Nighttime routine is really important as well, um, but I think morning pages are really, really great. So try to do morning pages. If not, make it nighttime pages. You don't have to do what I do. Do three pages stream of consciousness at night. Nighttime pages. You invented a new thing. You can write a book about it, right? All right, what else we got here? Let's see. We only got about 10 minutes left. So do you guys have any questions about journaling? If you have questions about journaling, drop them in here. We can keep going on this. Um, the only other question that I had written here in notes was about sleep quality. Um, so maybe I'll just jump into this really quick um, because it's going to be bedtime for most people coming up soon. I know it is for me because I like to wake up early. So um, yeah, let's talk about this real quick. Here's the question. It says, I play recreational sports twice a week in the evening and I find it difficult to fall asleep and rarely seem to sleep well that night in general. What do you recommend for post-exercise to prepare for sleep? Secondly, does Justin ever wake up in the middle of the night? And if so, what do you do to get back to sleep? No, I never, ever wake up in the middle of the night. <laughs> um, I'm also a complete and utter psychopath about sleep quality. So I've talked about this before. You can go back and watch, um, I think it's AMA number nine or AMA number 10, which is called Sleep Hacking and Personal Freedom. I have been unbelievably meticulous about sleep quality for years now. I mean, I really, really have hacked this. Like I have uh, blackout shades, blackout curtains in my room. My Nest thermostat is automatically set a couple hours before 9 p.m. It cools the entire house to 66 degrees. Um, all the lights in my house, uh, overhead lighting is red at night. I only use red night, red red bulbs and lamps. Um, at night, I wear a blue blocker. I, I mean, as you guys know, like I have multiple pairs of blue blockers for different times of day. Um, I have a program called Iris on my computer screen that dims the computer, all these things. Um, yeah, so I'm just crazy. I have a grounding mat on my mattress underneath my sheets is a grounding mat. Um, I wear an eye mask. I have a special orthopedic pillow for a neck injury that I dealt with ever since I was hit, hit by a car and boxing and jujitsu and all the things that I've done. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I'm meticulous about sleep quality. Um, now, the thing here is I don't know your nighttime routine. So this is a little bit tricky because you're, you're saying I have trouble falling asleep post-exercise. But what I would really want to know is if you have all the basics covered every single night when you go to sleep. Do you have a good sleep hygiene routine? Because most people that ask me about sleep problems are like, well, you know, I'm working out, I'm doing uh, sports before bed, and then I can't fall asleep. But in reality, you're doing sports, having a big giant meal when you get home, taking a hot shower, then getting in bed and scrolling Instagram for an hour, and then trying to go to sleep. And you're like, man, it's weird. I don't sleep well when I have sporting events, right? So you need to make sure you have your basics covered. That is screen time before bed. Get a lockdown on screen time before bed. If you have to look at screens, download something like Iris. 
um, and use blue blockers. As an I Am Clovis member, you get a discount on True Dark blue blockers, which is what I use personally. Um, cool, set your temperature to cool between 66 to 69 degrees is ideal. Think about getting some blackout curtains in your room. Think about using an eye mask, um, all these little things, right? Now, in terms of you doing physical fitness, that really is a bummer. It's very difficult. Jiu-jitsu at night is the same way. Uh, anything competitive, it's just a big cortisol spike before bed. It is really difficult, can be really difficult to fall asleep. Um, I find that I just, like my sleep latency, my aura ring's charging right now, but my aura, aura ring, it's like, yeah, man, uh, be careful because you fell asleep in two minutes last night and that's literally too fast. It will tell me like I fell asleep too fast, which meant I'm way too tired. Um, I simply do too many things in this life. That's all there is to it. I do too many things in life and I'm exhausted every time I go to bed, right? So that's a good thing. I sleep like a baby. I don't wake up in the middle of the night ever. If I do wake up like to go to the bathroom, I lay back down and I'm asleep in 4.5 seconds. Um, so I don't really deal with that. But yes, there are some extra things that you can do as an athlete. You can consider supplementation. You can consider... Um, Magnesium, make sure you're getting your electrolytes. Uh, you can do magnesium before bed. I have the electrolyte drink recipe in a couple show notes. Make sure you're getting your electrolytes throughout the day. Make sure you're well hydrated. Um, you could add some additional magnesium to your routine before bed. There are things like Doc Parsley Sleep Remedy. Um, great product. You get a discount as an I Am Clovis member. Um, those things I like to see people use in tandem with the lifestyle changes, like get all those things from my sleep hacking AMA. I have an article about it, a two part series on the Clovis blog about sleep hacking, how to get your sleep really, really dialed in. Um, that's at IamClovis.com. Just click the blog and you can check out that sleep hacking blog, but you need to get all those things down in tandem with something like a doc parsley sleep remedy and use that. It will help you sleep. It's a great product that people swear by it. People tell me that they've used every sleep product under the sun. I switch them to doc parsley and they're like, Oh my God, you literally have saved my life. This is incredible. But long term, I'd like you to get off of it eventually. So use that in tandem as you change these lifestyle things and start to get your sleep hygiene much, much better. Um, the other thing I would recommend for an athlete is uh, hot, cold before bed. So obviously I can do this with an infrared sauna. I'll do an infrared sauna and then a nice cold shower. But if you don't have an infrared sauna, which most people don't, um, then take your shower just before bed and do at the end of the shower, make the water as hot as it'll go and stand in it for 30 seconds and then make the water as ice cold as it'll go and stand in it for 30 seconds, hot, 30 seconds, cold, 30 seconds, hot back and forth, 10 times. The 10th time you should end on ice cold for 30 seconds and then go to bed. I assure you that will help you sleep better. I promise you. A lot of people don't like doing it. It's not particularly fun. I think it's fun. I'm a crazy person, but um, I think you will sleep much, much better with that one hack alone. If you just do the cold, hot, the hot, cold hack, and again, end on cold, 10 time, 10 time rotation, hot to cold, 30 seconds each, end on ice cold for 30 seconds, I think you will sleep better just with that one hack alone. I think that will be huge for you. And um, the other thing to consider here is if you're doing a, a sport with a lot of running, sprinting, like if you're doing like basketball or football or something like that, where you're really doing a lot of intense running and blasting out a lot of glycogen, another quick trick before bed, about 30 minutes before bed, is to take something. Now, again, this is for my athletes. This is not for those of you who are not exercising and are overweight and obese and all these things, right? Um, if you're blasting out a bunch of glycogen just before bed, then you could do half tablespoon, even a full tablespoon of raw honey and equal parts raw honey and MCT oil, something like C8, like brain octane would be good for this. Kiss my keto, which you get a discount on. This is an I am Clovis member. I get you guys discounts on everything, right? If you were to take like Half a, tea, half a tablespoon of raw honey and half a tablespoon or full tablespoon of MCT oil and take that before bed, what's happening is your glycogen stores are really depleted. The brain actually does an awful lot while we sleep. If you guys want to Google, you can Google the glymphatic system. A lot of you may have heard of the lymphatic system. We're talking about the glymphatic system, which is basically a Zamboni that cleans the entire brain as you sleep. This does require energy and the brain does like to get some of its energy from glucose. This is true. Is what we talk about. This is why we have gluconeogenesis, right? So getting a little bit of glucose in your system, like uh, raw honey with some MCT oil and C8 MCT oil is basically an exogenous ketone. So now you've just given your brain the one-two punch of any fuel it could potentially need to fuel all of its needs while you sleep. That can often help people stay asleep, which is what you're asking about here, uh, waking up in the middle of the night. This little mix of, of glucose and... MCT oil can really be powerful before bed to help you stay asleep and to improve your deep sleep cycles. So hopefully 
Um, that's pretty good, right? Is that everything? I think it's a pretty in-depth answer about that. Almost 9 p.m., everybody. What else we got here? Any thoughts on weighted blankets? You know, I don't know. I have never tried one. I've never tried a weighted blanket. Um, there's a weighted blanket in the room where I see my therapist, and she's had me, like, put it on my lap before. I'm like, oh, that's kind of interesting. They're really, you know, I picked it up for the first time. I was like, damn, this is, like, <laughs> legit weighted blanket, you know? Um, but I've never tried a weighted blanket, so I don't know. Um, I think weighted blankets tend to be for – I think they're geared towards people with anxiety. I think I, I could be totally wrong about this. Um, so no, I don't have any personal experience, but um, I am looking into something called the pod by eight sleep. And it looks like uh, I'm going to be doing a podcast with the founder of eight sleep, uh, talking all about sleep hacking and all these things that the pod by eight sleep is amazing. It looks amazing. I want this thing in my house. So I'm going to get my hands on one. What else we got a uh, way blanket. Yep. Not sure. Calm magnesium when you wake up in the middle of the night. Do not turn on the lights or phone. Meditate breathing techniques. Yeah, those, that's great advice right there for sure. Um, definitely don't look at your phone. Also, if you are sleeping with your phone in your room and it's not in airplane mode, stop that immediately. Don't give me this shit. There might be a family emergency in the middle of the night. Put your phone in airplane mode. Put it in airplane mode, okay? I do use my phone as an alarm. It is in airplane mode. It doesn't come out of airplane mode until I'm done with that entire morning routine that I that I spelled out for you guys in this. So even if your phone's your alarm clock, you better be in airplane mode. If your phone's not in airplane mode and you're wondering why you're waking up in the middle of the night, I don't even want to hear it. You got you to gotta fix that right off the bat. That's low-hanging fruit, okay? Calm works well, eating magnesium. <laughs> yeah, nice, dude. All right, what else we got? We use weighted blankets in the hospital for restless, sedated patients, and they work well. That's awesome. Killer. Very good stuff. Yeah, I'd like to learn more about weighted blankets. I'll have to get my hands on one or something. Uh, if you guys have any brands or anything you like or whatever and ever want me to, to check those out, just let me know because I like vetting brands and having new things brought to my, my attention. I, if you guys have never seen this pod, uh, it's literally just called The Pod, P-O-D by 8sleep, uh, E-I-G-H-T, just 8sleep, I think is their website. Um, the pod looks amazing. So probably going to get my hands on one of those. And I know for a fact that the founder of that company that invented the eight sleep is coming on the podcast. So you guys will learn a whole lot more about that. Pretty cool stuff. Um, but again, expensive. A lot of these things are expensive. So anyway, I think that's it. Uh, sorry for the crazy rants at the beginning of this episode. Sometimes that is necessary, I guess, when I get really upset and tired of explaining things. But yeah, so I hope I gave you some perspective on fitness, how to really think about fitness and stop beating yourself up for fitness and stop thinking, it's January 1st and my friend told me that she wants to sign up for a 5K and my other friend told me that she's getting a membership at Barry's Boot Camp and I'm going to go to Barry's Boot Camp with her and we're going to go to Planet Fitness and we're going to do my, 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 my. Year after year after year for decades now, ladies and gentlemen, and it just doesn't seem to change now, does it? So we got to rethink things. Really got to rethink things. Thanks for the info. You're very welcome. Mike, thanks, bro. You're very welcome. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it. AMA number 95. This is a good one. I think we'll get some good clips out of this one. I love those clips. I updated the Alexa um, audio clips as well today. So um, I don't know that there's an Alexa audio clip today, but there's new ones tomorrow. Um, it's built out pretty much through the end of December. So don't forget about that, that I do have an Alexa skill. So if you have an Amazon device in your house, you just say Alexa flash briefing, you can set up Clovis culture on there and you'll get to hear my voice each and every morning. And it's wonderful. Thank you guys so much for clicking all the love buttons, the love buttons, the like buttons, the happy face, the wow face, the laughing face, all those. Remember, this is great for engagement, really helps people see these videos. Um, we're at 93 reviews, I think on the Clovis culture podcast. So do me a huge favor. If you have not reviewed the podcast, Go review the podcast, take a screenshot, send it to me, justin at iamclovis.com. I will send you some free stuff in the mail for doing that review. I really appreciate it. If we can get that up to triple digits, it's a game changer. We can get better guests on the show. We can get um, all sorts of stuff, right? The triple digits really makes my podcast show up in feeds for people that might not even be searching for me and like the popular podcasts or whatever, right? So the more reviews, the better. Getting to triple digit reviews is a really big deal for a podcast, especially a little old podcast like mine that doesn't do any paid advertising. Um, that's a big deal. So help me get there. Thank you for the engagement. Share this with your friends. This will be out as the Clovis Culture Podcast tomorrow. AMA number 95 will be its own standalone podcast episode. Go listen to my episode with Dr. Wes Hendricks. You can go to clovis.show slash Wes for all the show notes on that because we talk about an awful lot of stuff in the show notes. So, uh, and some really inspiring Instagrams you can follow. That's all linked out at clovis.show slash slash clovis.show slash Wes, W-E-S. You can check that out. Thank you guys so much. I will see you in the Facebook groups tomorrow, bright and early, all right?
put on your blue blockers. Go get some sleep. All right, guys. Good night. Bye-bye.